Hey there, this is Math 7, Unit 2, Lesson 4. Again, now looking at proportional relationships and equations today. So we're going to be adding an idea about an equation today, something like a y value is going to be equal to a constant proportionality, which we tend to call a k value, times the x value. You could also think of it that our constant proportionality is always equal to our y value over x value. But let's look at that as we go along. So this first of all, number talk, you do some division, kind of solving some things mentally. We did a little bit of this the other day. When I'm multiplying or dividing by 100, I'm gonna be moving a decimal over two spots. So you end up with 6.45. If I think about this one here, if I'm gonna move it over two spots, that's great. And then I'm gonna basically cut that in half though, right? From what I had before, divided by 50, or actually not divided by 50, I'm gonna double it because here I did it in 100, here's 50. So if I take this number and I actually multiply by two, I end up with six doubled is 12, 45 doubled is 90, just some mental math there, okay? And so just some different things you can think about, right? If I'm gonna do this divided by 30, I know if it's 10, I'd move it over one space and I might think to myself, three goes into all these things here. Mm, I'm gonna have something like 1.62 and then just kind of some fun. So there's some mental math to be thinking about how you can use numbers to move things over quickly and make it a little more simplistic. Now on to today's lesson, you have lesson 4.2 here, feeding a crowd revisited. We're back to a recipe says two cups of dry rice will serve six people. Complete the table as you answer the question. So first, how many people will one cup of rice serve? So I need to determine what is my, my constant of proportionality, my k value right here that I'm multiplying by to get to there. So two times what number is gonna get me to that value? If I'm not sure, I can always say that it's the y over the x. This is my x value and this is my y value. y here happens to be six and x is two, which makes my constant of proportionality three. So I'm multiplying by three to go across this direction. So to find out how many people one cup of rice will serve, I multiply by three, one times three is three, and that's my answer there for how I get there. How many people will three cups of rice serve, 12 cups and 43 cups? Again, we would just continue by multiplying by three all the way across to solve what that's gonna be, okay? And so we end up with a nine, we end up with a 36, and we end up with 129. The final question here is how many people will X cups of rice serve? And again, our lesson today is about equations, right? And with the equations, what we tend to find is that we have values that are unknown or left as a variable. So this becomes X times three. You can see why we tend to write our multiplication signs as this little dot here after a while, huh? Because otherwise I get x, x, three, and that's just not gonna work out too well. So x times three, which can be rewritten as three x, all right? So in terms of what we're saying here, we're saying that to find out how many people rice can serve, we're gonna take the constant proportionality three, and we're gonna multiply that by the cups of rice. And that's like our equation. That's our y equals k times the x value. All right, that's the equation. So let's take a look at the second one you did in class together. So the recipe says that six spring rolls will serve three people. Complete the table. All right, so it's the same idea that we did before, except now when you're looking at this, we're going from six to three, which means I'm not multiplying by two. In fact, I'm looks like I am dividing by two, right? So I could think of it as three over six, again, my X value, my Y value, Y over X, three over six, which is the same <clears throat> as a half. So I can think about it as multiplying by a half or dividing by two. I prefer to multiply by a half. So to fill in this chart, one times a half is a half, 10 times a half or half of 10 is five, 16 times a half or half of 16 is eight. 25 times a half or half of 25 is 12.5. And because we're just multiplying everything, everything by half, we have one half in becomes my value for 
just the n times a half. Okay, when you look at the two charts here, we had one that was a half times n, another one, the first one, was a three times n. So in terms of the difference here, with the first table we multiplied by a whole number, with the second table we multiplied by a fraction, and that was really the difference between the two tables. All right, then you went to the third activity, which was again about a plane flying at constant speed between Denver and Chicago, and it took the plane 1.5 hours to fly 915 miles. So we had some information given here, the time and the distance, okay? What we don't have are all these other numbers there. We don't have those there. So what I wanted to do first is I wanted, it says to complete the table. To do that, I have to start with what I know. I don't know my k value, my constant proportionality. I don't know what that is yet. I have an x value, I have a y value. I don't know that. But we've said so far that the way we figure out what our k value is, is we take the y value and we divide by a given x value. I do have a y value, 915, and I have one x value here, 1.5. And 915 divided by 1.5 is 610. This means that the plane, traveling at a constant speed, flew at a rate of 610 miles per hour. So that's going to be our constant. Is that going to change? Did it ever say in the story problem that the plane was speeding up or slowing down? Nope. And as a result of that, I can now add this value to all these other cells here. I can say 610, 610, 610, because that's my constant of proportionality. So now I could take my k value and I can actually come back over here and start at the beginning and do 1 times 610 because in one hour, traveling at 610 miles per hour, it's going to now go 610 miles. I can do the same down here and say for two hours, traveling at a rate of 610 miles per hour, this plane is going to fly 1,220 miles. I can do it for the 2.5 times 610, and I get 1,525. And here, for t number of hours, constant rate times 610, I have 610t for what's happening there. So that's my chart, but I had to begin with what I, what I was given to find my k value, my constant proportionality, and then use that back in my table to find out all the distances there. And that's what you were doing uh, on this first part of 4.3. So how far does the plane fly in one hour? In one hour, the plane goes 610 miles. How far would it fly in T hours? We already said, we don't know. It's 610 times whatever that T is going to be. And so if distance represents the distance the plane flies, the speed for T hours, write an equation that relates T and D. T and D. So, Typically, we try to get it in the form of y equals k times the x. And you look back at what we have here, we would say that our y value is our distance. So our distance is going to equal our k value, which we said was 610, and our x value is time. And that's a typical setup there for how we would do that. So how far would a plane fly in 3 hours at this speed? In 3.5 hours, explain or show your reasoning. So again, just using what we've created here, we could do three times 610, so three hours times the rate that's going, which gives us 1830. And if it was doing 3.5 hours times 610, we'd see 2135 as solutions there. The thing is, we're just basically taking time and we're multiplying by our K value, which was in this case 610. That's how we're solving that. And that's how we're going through it. Okay, so from there, we had a little are you ready for more? And maybe you did this one with your class, I'm not really sure, but it has a rocky planet, orbits uh, Proxima Centauri, a star that is 1.3 parsecs from Earth. This planet is the closest planet outside our solar system. How long does it take? light from there to reach there a parsec is 3.26 light years a light year is the distance light travels in one year so what we're looking at is taking our distance and multiplying it by our rate of travel to see how far it's going to go 
So our distance is the 1.3 parsecs times our rate of how fast it's going, 3.26 light years. All right, to so tell me that it's about 4.24. Okay, that's super exciting. Now, it says that there's two twins and one leaves a spaceship to explore, traveling at 90% the speed of light while the other one stays home. So we're doing 90% of the value I got over there. So if I have 4.24 as my starting point here, and I wanna find out 90% of it, 90% of it, I need to convert the 90% into a decimal to do that. I'm gonna move this over two hops. So it's times 0.9 or 9.0, which then becomes 4.7 years. So this guy was 4.24 and this one's 4.7 years. So lots of fun. I guess you can get older in some ways than your twin. Loads of fun. All right, revisiting bread dough. We had this one before talking about the bakery and uh, what's going on. This was an optional activity. So you might have done it. You might not have done it. Hard to say. Um, when I looked at it here again, for looking at completing the table, you begin with looking at your x and your y value. We have our y over x, which is 10 over 8, which reduces to 5 over 4. So 5 over 4 becomes our constant proportionality times 5 over 4 times 5 over 4. And we fill that in and we complete the table there. Um, and you move on down to the very end, we have 5 over 4h. Um, just as a note, teachers out there, I know when I looked at this in the teacher's manual, it had a different solution for this one there. It had flipped it to 4 over 5. Not sure why, maybe I'm missing something. Um, but as I did it, I did 5 over 4 and had 20, 5 over 4 here, and it was 37.5. So if you did the optional activity, double check your work there. But the constant proportionality, I believe, is 5 over 4, which we have to still plug back in and multiply all the way across. All right, so in summary, today's lesson. In summary, what we're talking about here is that we can use a table to look at a proportional relationship between two values. Maybe we call it an X and a Y. And from this, what we can do is we can find out what a constant proportionality is gonna be. And that constant is gonna be the Y value over the X value. In this case, 4 to 1. We tend to call that our k value. That is our constant of uh, proportionality. Okay? So, this constant proportionality allows us then to get this, in this case, if this we're doing with some paint, we can always get the same shade of something, right? As we mix things together, because we're going to have the same ratio of both elements in all of the items. Okay, so we can go one direction by going four. We can also go the other way by looking at the reciprocal. We can look the relationship the other way around. We call it reciprocal relationship. And we end up with, uh, uh, in this case here, going that way, one to four. So we can have reciprocal relationships with one another. And that's what kind of makes proportions fun. Either way, you're always going to multiply x by the same number, k, the constant proportionality to get y. And then we can also do, write as an equation, y equals kx, which is something we talked about throughout the lesson today. Okay, let's turn and go to your homework. You can always take a moment to pause and do your work before you start checking your answers. And here we go. So, says, a certain ceiling, this is our homework for Unit 2 Lesson 4. A certain ceiling is made of tiles. Every square meter requires 10.75 tiles. So every meter requires 10.75 tiles. Fill in the table. So in this case, because we started with a 1, they gave us our constant proportionality at the very beginning. 1 times 10.75. So I'm going to first of all multiply this by 10.75. And we end up with 100, sorry, 107, <laughs> 107.5, moving the decimal over, right? Just one spot. There we go. 
if I'm going this way, instead of multiplying by 10.75, I need to actually multiply by one over 10.75. Or think of it like dividing, right? It's like dividing 100 by 1.75. I'm going this direction there. So 100 divided by 10.75 gives me 9.3. And then this way, we have our A times our constant proportionality, which is 10.75. And we just rewrite that as 10.75 times A. All right, and that's my, that's how it works, <laughs> okay? That'd be my, my equation to solve for any other number of ceilings. If they gave me 35, I'd plug in 35 and solve to see how many tiles that would be. Number two, on a flight from New York to London, an airplane travels at a constant speed. All right, an equation relating the distance traveled in D, miles D, the number of hours flying T, is T equals one over 500 D. How long will it take the airplane to travel 800 miles? All right, so they gave us a nice little equation here. The time, how long, is gonna be solved by doing one over 500 times D. So our rate, in this case, is one over 500 times our distance, which they said was 800 miles, okay? So when I do the math, I have 800 over 500, which becomes 8 over 5, which can be reduced to 1 and 3 fifths, or as a decimal, I could write that as 1.6. So how long will it take? It'll take 1.6 hours to do the trip. Either one, 1 and 3 fifths or 1.6. Number three, I'm going to find the constant proportionality. So here we go. I like to start by writing an X and a Y just so I know what's going on. I then take a nice value that I can tell right away and I can make that 8 over 2, which becomes, what does that become? 4 over 1. So my constant proportionality is going to be 4. Double check that. What is 3 times 4? Is it 12? Sure is. What is 10 times 4? It is 40. Sure is. So my equation is going to be P, which is this Y here. Where we have y equals kx, p equals my k value, 4, times my x value, which they call s there. So p equals 4s there. My constant proportionality is 4. Over here, to find my constant proportionality, a little shortcut, I could do 6.28 divided by 2. It's not too bad. Those are all even numbers, so it wouldn't be bad to do. Half of six is three, half of two is one, and half of eight is four, 3.14. Or I can use that mental math and say, well, this is also 31.4 divided by 10. When I divide by 10, I move the decimal to the left to one spot there, so I have 3.14. Either way, you can figure out that constant proportionality is 3.14. So for my equation, I would say that C equals 3.14 and my other letter d 3.14 d all right let's take a look at the back page here comes some review questions all right our book always has lots of reviews so if you weren't getting it the first time we can try it again a map of colorado says that the scale is one inch to 20 miles or one to one million two hundred sixty seven thousand two hundred are these two ways of reporting this sa the scale the same? Explain your reasoning. Well, this is inches to miles, and this is some unit to another very large unit. It's possible that this is the number of inches that are inside of a mile. I'm not sure, but I could certainly take a look to figure that out. So let's take, for example, that there are 12 inches in one foot, and that there are 5,280 feet in one mile, okay? So that's gonna be a total of 63,360 inches per mile, okay? So that's my, my conversion so far. So there are 63,360 inches in a mile. Have I found a number that matches yet? I have not, but for the scale, the scale is one inch to 20 miles. All right, well, that's just one mile. Let's take our one mile then and multiply it by 20 and see what we get. All right, I have a zero there. 
So the zero, I can just hold it, a space holder there. So I multiply here, two times zero is two, six times two is 12, carry the one, three times two is six plus one is seven, three times two is six, and two times six is 12. Add my commas back in, and I have 1,267,200. How's that looking? Hmm, those are the same. So we would say, yes, it is the same way of looking at it. We've just converted the scale from inches to miles to inches to inches by eliminating the unit aspect. So one inch is, is proportional to 1,267,200 inches. So that's the idea there. All right, now let's take a look at our polygon here. Now what we're gonna do on the grid, it says, this is back from unit one, draw a scaled copy uh, with a scale factor of three, and we're gonna label that A. Here I have a value, a length of two and a two, and what I like to look at here is I'm going down one and over two. So to make it a, a factor of three, I'm gonna do two times three, which is six. So I'll draw this down one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go out six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Out six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna do this shape three times. So I'm gonna go one to there, down one, over two, two, and then down one, over two, three. So that's how far I'm gonna go out on my diagonal line there. And then the same thing is here, going up one, over two, up one, over two, and up one, over two. And I draw my diagonal line there. We're gonna call that copy A. Got it. And then we have copy B, draw a scale copy polygon with a scale factor of a half. So we're gonna take our initial two times a half, which is equal to one. So in this case here, instead of a length of two, we have a length of one, 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 one. And then our little guy here, we're gonna go, instead of going down a whole one, we'll go down half a one. Instead of going over two, we go out one, which means I'm gonna be right there. And we have one, one, and we're gonna label that B. Okay, so is polygon A a scaled copy of polygon B? We would definitely say yes, they're a scaled copy, right? They're the same copy. And then what scale factor takes B to A? So going from B, which has a value of one on that length there, and A, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. How do I go from one to six, that scale factor? We would say a scale factor is gonna be six. That's multiplying all the parts by six. All right, hope that helps you out. Have a great day.